Hey folks, welcome back. I have your latest home prices and insights for the Peel and Durham areas for week ending September 15th. There's more competition out there for both buyers and sellers. A quick thank you to those of you using the link to my calendar in the description below to reach out to me. You know, I, I, I'm happy to talk to any of you at any time, anything related to real estate, buying, selling, just general questions. What we've done is in the description below, we put a link to my calendar. Click on that, pick a time that's suitable for you. This way I'll know ahead of time and I'll, I'll make sure I'm available to talk to you about whatever's on your mind. During this past few weeks, we did a few transactions and, and you know, on, on two of them where we, were rep, where we represented the buyers, we were able to take advantage of mistakes the listing agent did, mistakes in the listing, the actual MLS listings, mistakes in their negotiation, mistakes in their marketing. I, I know sometimes, I, I know for a lot of people, they think all realtors are the same, but it's not true. And it's not true for any industry. In, in all industries, there's people that are really, really good at their trade and, and others not so good. Who you hire matters in our purchasing and taking advantage of the mistakes the, the listing agent made. It, it cost real money to those sellers and, and we were able to take advantage of it obviously because we're working for our buyers. So there's plenty of good realtors out there to choose from. Who you hire matters. It's really important, especially now in this market with more competition for both buyers and sellers. Let's get right into the numbers. I'm talking about detached properties only for, for, for the, the Peel area, for Mississauga and for Brampton and for the Durham area. So here's a quick summary. Across the top here in blue, I have the average sold price for, for Mississauga and the orange here is for Brampton and you can see on both and actually all three also for the Durham area, average sold price has come down. But let's look a little bit closer because it's really not as, as bad as it seems there. So here's Mississauga, detached properties, sales went up from 38 to 65. Now, average sold price came down from where it was before, $1,590,000 to $1,566,000. Now, $1,566,000 as an average sold price is higher than it's been for a good part of the year. So, we're coming down from a high price just slightly. Sales did go up and the amount of properties selling at $2 million or more went up by two. So, we're, it's now sitting at eight. Overall, if we compare one year to the next, we're up 22% versus last year's average sold price. Of the 65 that were sold, 74% sold at list price or more. I feel I gotta repeat that, 74%. So it's getting extremely competitive. So sales are up, but there's more competition if you're looking to buy. And there's also more competition if you're looking to sell. We were over the last, I guess, a month, we were listing 76, 77, 69, 60. Then last, the previous week, we saw listings go up a little bit to 79. But last week, we listed 130 detached properties in Mississauga. So that's very refreshing if you're a buyer. Buyers have always been there. It's not like there's extra buyers now. They've always been there. There hasn't been much choice. Now with more listings, there's more choices, more purchases. We'll see sales increasing over the next little while. But if you're a seller, there's more competition now for you. And it's so important that strategically you're placed where you stand out amongst your competition. You're either helping people to sell their house, other competition, or other listings are going to help you to sell your house. So strategy is so important. Months of inventory in Mississauga is down now to 0 0.8 months of inventory, very tight market in Mississauga. Average days on market is sitting at nine, which is down by quite a bit from where it's been over the last few weeks. 
Brampton. It, it's unbelievable what's happening with prices in Brampton. Let's go to the sales first. We went from 88 to 96. So sales have come up slightly. Of those 96, five sold at list price or more. Average sold prices has come down a little bit, sitting at just under 1.3. 1,296,000 is the average sold price of a detached property in Brampton. Not too long ago, Brampton struggled to be over a million dollars. Now, it's like there's no chance of it coming under a million dollars. And the 1,296,000 is down slightly, but from a record price of 1,343,000. And 1,296 is the highest average, the third highest average sold price we've had all year. So prices are high. Don't take any, a lot of comfort in, wow, it's down. It's really not. Compared to last year, we're sitting at 31% higher than last year's average sold price. Of the 96 that were sold, 80% sold at list price or more, 80%. It's gonna feel like all of them. There's very little room to maneuver to find a property where you could take your time and put in an offer with conditions and negotiate back and forth. You'll find that in negotiating, you might lose it to somebody else. We went from 105 listings to 135. So listings are up, which is good news there and months of inventory is sitting at 0.4. Average days on market is down from the previous week to nine, nine days on market. And it's interesting that it's this slow because most of the listings have an offer date. So that artificially brings up the average days on market and it's still sitting at just nine. Okay, so let's look at the Durham area. Now for Durham, I'm combining Ajax, Pickering and Whitby into one group. Sales went up from 42 to 72 sales. So that's a big jump from the previous week. Average sold price, I mean, I could say it went down, but just by a few hundred dollars, like $500 is what the average sold price came down, which it's coming down from a record price of 1,220. That's the highest average sold price in forever that we've ever had in the Durham area and it's still sitting up there. Even with sales climbing as much as they did, the average sold price is still quite high. That's 34% higher than last year's average sold price at this time. Of the 72 that sold, 89% sold at list price or more. If I say at 80%, it feels like all of them, 89% is all of them. Like I know it's not 100%. We don't need to be at 100%. It's like the weather. 20 degrees feels like 27. 89% feels like all of them. We went from 60 listings to 97 listings. So listings are up also in the Durham area, which is nice to see. Months of inventory. I, I got to check my, my Excel sheets here because it looks like it's stuck. I, it's sitting at 0 0.3. It's been at 0 0.3 for, for a long time now. And days on market is sitting at seven. It's really hard to understand seven days on market for, for me because I know most of the listings going out there have an offer date, which is normally a week to, to 10 to 12 days from the listing date. And to have a days on market at seven is just extremely, extremely low. And well, we're sitting at months of inventory 0 0.3. Here's the summary. It's a seller's market. There's lots more competition out there. Prices are strong. It, it just seems that the real estate in, in Peel and Durham is extremely strong, motivated buyers, motivated sellers work with a good agent that's going to help you to to hit your goals take stick around for a minute there's a, a, an interesting new listing we're about to introduce below have a great day let me introduce you to 4027 Bloor street west located just east of the east mall this is a three bedroom bungalow with a large private driveway sits on a 43 by 120 lot 
Now you can take the bungalow as is, update it to your liking, but it comes complete with building plans for a large two-family home over 4,000 square feet. So let me show you how we're going to go from the current small three bedroom bungalow that's on the property now to this large over 4,000 square foot modern two family home. City plans and permits are already in place. Here's the floor plan. Now this is a unique setup. Two families can live under one roof here and both have luxurious living quarters. Here's the primary suite over here. Now it's divided between primary and secondary. Now to enter the primary suite, you either come in through the garage that has its own entrance where your own private space in the garage or through the covered porch right at the front. You come in and it's all open concept. The primary residence is about 2,400 square feet. You've got your open concept main floor and a walk out to a private back deck up to the second floor where you have five bedrooms, three bathrooms, four skylights and its own laundry facilities. Coming back to the secondary suite. Now the secondary suite is about 1,650 square feet. There are two entrances to the secondary suite. One is through the garage where you have your own private parking or through the side entrance here and you come up and it's also open concept on the main floor with the kitchen, the living room and a walk out to a private deck. Now the living quarters for this, you've got to go down just a few steps to the basement. You've got three bedrooms, two full bathrooms and a family room and it walks up. There's stairs also walking up a little bit to, to the backyard. Now, I, I don't want to confuse the secondary suite, say for a, a basement rental that everybody's kind of used to. The secondary suite is, is a full, full living quarters for another family. The basement has a ceiling height of 10 feet. Five feet of it is above grade, big windows. It's, the point is it doesn't feel like a basement. And, and this is easily, easily for two families to live comfortably, luxurious, or use it as rental income or for co-ownership. Call me and I'll give you all the details.